I got this comment from Noso Tai. Is that how I say it? Noso Tai. Really enjoyed this video. For the next tutorial, could you please do knockback and play it invincibility frames? Keep up the amazing work. You it really put together and explain things well. And I got this comment from Pet Oo. Oh, nice tutorial. It would be great if you could do a tutorial on melee attacks. Well, as a melee attack could lead to a knockback, let's put them together in the same tutorial. Okay, so what I've got on the screen now is a basic player, which is just my typical green square. There's nothing fancy about him, no variables, no instance variables. The only thing I have is A, D, and W set up on the movement for left, right, and jump, and he has a basic platform behavior. And I've also created a slightly bigger red square called enemy. He has no behaviors, no instance variables, and is simply just a bigger sprite. So what do we need to do first? Melee attack. So if I go into the player animations, I've got one for idle, which is just a basic green square with nothing. And then I've got one for attack, which all I've done is added a little kind of arm onto the sprite. So I've just made the, uh, the canvas size slightly bigger, and I've just added that arm that pops out to the side. So if we change the initial animation here to attack, there it is, it pops out. So what we need to do now is put into the event sheet that if we push a button, which will be the attack button, then that arm will jut out and try and attack somebody in front of the player. So let's add that in. Keyboard, on key pressed, and we'll use the space bar. Then we're gonna say player. Set the animation attack from the beginning. Now what will happen is when I push the spacebar, he'll play, but then he'll just stay in that animation. So we need to tell the system that when he's finished attacking, to set him back to the idle state. And the way I'm going to do that is by adding a weight, 0.5 seconds, and then simply copy and paste and change it back to idle. And you can see he drops down into the ground slightly and that's a really easy fix. That's just to do with the origin point. So we open him up, click on origin point. The origin point is right there at the base. We go to the attack animation it needs to be in the middle of his uh, character. No, it's still there. Make sure the canvas size is the same height. And obviously make sure his collision box is on the floor. and the right shape. And now it should be fine. There we go. So what we need to do now is tell the system that when we hit him, when we push space and that little thing juts out, we're gonna knock that big square back. So what we need to do is create another sprite which will be small. You can just make it eight, eight by eight. I'm just gonna color it yellow. You can color it any color you want. It doesn't really matter. Make it yellow. And this is gonna be a collision detector. So I'm gonna call it SPR underscore collision box. And what I wanna do with, and what I wanna do with this one is spawn it in if I take the snapping off, I want to spawn it in right here where his arm juts out at the point when we push spacebar. So I'm going to pop it down here for now because we don't need it when the game starts. But when we push the spacebar, we're going to say player. And you can just start typing spawn, spawn another object. And we're going to spawn this one. And then leave those two blank for now because what we need to do is go back into the player and on the attack animation only, we need to come down to the image points 
and we need to add a new one. And that image point one is going to be right here, right at the end of the arm. So now when we go to the event sheet, we can say we want it on layer zero because that's the only layer that we currently have, but I want it on image point one. So now we should see it. So what it's going to do is going to, every time I push it, it's spawning it at image point zero. because the idle animation is playing first and the image point is there. So we're going to need to go and add that image point. If we just go on to the attack animation, right click it, just apply to all animations. Now it's in the same place. So now when we play, it'll pop up at the end of his arm. There. But it's a slight delay, you can see. And that's because we've got that 0.5 second wait. Here. So what we need to do is drag that up and put it in first. So now it appears immediately when we hit, but it's doing it multiple times which we don't want. So what we need to do is after that 0.5 second wait, we need to destroy it. So instead of spawning it, but let's add, a, add an action, collision box, destroy and pop it in there. So now it'll appear, and then, in fact, let's take that down to 0.2 seconds. It'll now appear and then disappear. Now what we need to do is tell the system that if that collision box touches the enemy, then the enemy needs to be knocked back. But what I wanna do first is I wanna make that invisible so we can see the animation. So now we can go into the event sheet and we can add an event and we can say collision box on collision with another object, enemy. So now we've set up the event. So when that touches the enemy, what do we want the system to do? Well, we need to play around with the enemy's X and Y position because we want to knock him back. So we want to change his position in the game. But to do that, we need to know a couple of things because if we're punching him from the left, we want him to knock back this way to the right. If we're on the other side and we hit him, then we need him to knock back the other way. We need to add a sub event, because when that happens, we need to compare a couple of things. We need to compare where the player is. So we need to say, if the player, and we need to compare the X, which is left and right, is less than the enemy, it's X position. And we need to do another one, which we can just copy which we can just copy and paste. And we need to say if he is greater than. So if he's to the left, do this. If he's to the right, do this. But before we can do that, we need to add a behavior to the enemy. We need to add the platform behavior. Now click on add action enemy and we've got some new options here under the platform behavior. So we need to play with the vector. So we need to set his vector X, which is left and right. And we want to set that to his current self position. So where he currently is. And remember, if we're going to the right, we're adding and we need to plus in 100. See? Now we can hit him and knock him back, but that looks a bit boring. So what we need to do is make him jump up a little bit in the air. So we can add an action and we can say enemy, simulate control, and we can simulate a jump. You can see how high he goes. That's too much. Now. If the enemy's got some AI and he's moving around and jumping by himself, then you can't just rely on the original jump strength here. So what we need to do is set a variable. So we'll go global variable and we'll go knockback jump. And we'll set this variable to 50. Then when we in then when we activate this event here, we're going to set the jump 
uh, the jump force or the jump height to knock back jump. So enemy, set jump strength to that global variable, knock back jump. And we'll do that just before. However, once it's finished, we need to then set the, we need to add another global variable and we need to just go jump strength because this is going to be the normal jump strength of the enemy. It's not going to be relevant in this tutorial because we're not going to do anything with him. But then what you would effectively do is when that sequence of code is finished, you'd then set the jump strength back to 300. So he wouldn't automatically just be jumping at 50. There you go. Get out of here, Red Square. Okay, good. Um, right, let's also give him a flash behavior because when things get hit, we need to show that they're taking damage. And then all we do is add the action, enemy, and we're just going to set him to flash. If I can find it. There we go. Just for one second, on and off. We'll do that first. And that'll look a little bit better. That'll look a lot better. There we go. But it's not showing the jump. Let's put it at the end. How odd. Take it off. Now he that's because he's he's invisible while he's in the air. Okay. Let's add that back in. Flash. But let's make it much, much faster. 0.04. 0.04. Four. Yeah, one second. Let's see what that does. Yeah, I think half a second. Half a second. But let's um, set his knockback jump to 65 and see what that looks like. There you go knocking him back, taking some damage. You can play around with that in your own game. Okay, now we need to do the same thing on the other side. So you can just copy all of that, drag it down. But this time on the X, instead of plus 100, it's gonna be minus 100. The jump can be the same and the flash can be the same. Um, and then the only issue we're gonna have is we need to flip this guy around. So let me show you what I mean. So we can hit him this way but if we jump over him, the arm still comes out on the right side. So we need to add some conditions in that tell us to face the enemy the whole time. Or you could add um, when A is down. In fact, let's just do it up here. It's simple. We can go player, set mirrored. So when we push down A, he flips around, but we also need to remember to tell the computer to turn him the other way when we push D. So we're gonna say not mirrored. And now that will fix the problem and he should be able to be knocked back now both ways. We can knock him back that way. Oh, and he's still coming towards me. Um, if we're to the right of him. Okay, so I've just changed the condition, so the action. Um, if we're to the right of the enemy, I've just set the, the vector X to equal itself minus 1000, which is 10 times more on the minus than it is on the plus, and it seems to be working. Sometimes it's best just not to ask questions. And that's how we get the melee attack and the knockback working. Now we need player invincibility. So we need to add a Boolean onto the player. So we're gonna add an instance variable and we're gonna say in Vince. And I'm gonna set it to simply just yes or no. He's not invincible when we start the game, so I'm gonna leave it unchecked. Now, I'm going to add a projectile to the enemy so he will shoot at us so that we can be damaged to display when we're invincible and we're not invincible. So I'm going to do that right now. <clears throat> so I've just created a little square, five pixels by five pixels, and I've given it the bullet behavior and I've left everything to the default. Back in the event sheet, we're going to add an event and we're going to say system. I'm going to go down and we're going to say every X seconds and we're going to say every two seconds. Every two seconds, the enemy is gonna spawn that bullet. 
spawn another object and it's going to be bullet exactly on layer zero image point zero because that's the right in the center of the enemy i'm sorry right at the base of the enemy yeah it'll be right at the base in fact let's give them another image point um or we can delete these frames this was from a previous tutorial um let's set in image point one. Oh, we have got it in the middle image point one fine so we're going to go in and say well if you haven't got that in the middle right click add new image point image point one assign it to the center then we're going to go back into the code and we're going to say image point one so it will just pop up right in the middle of the enemy um, and then what we want to do is we want to set that bullet to face and target the player so we're going to add an action and we're going to say bullet set angle angle open brackets and now we want to give it its position so we're going to start by giving it its current position that it's in so self.x and self.y and then the position that it's going to go to which is player.x and player.y so it's sim no, that's not a dot that's a dot so it's simply gonna it's, it's basically saying the angle is gonna it's gonna calculate the angle itself between wherever the bullet is and wherever the player is and that's where it's gonna send it so after we've created it we're gonna set that angle and then that should be enough just to target us there we go shooting right at me if I go up here shooting right at me now we need to add a condition that says if we get hit by the bullet we take damage if we're not invisible. Uh, invisible, invincible. So what we need to do now is add an event and say bullet on collision with another object and that is going to be us. So if the bullet hits us um, then what we want to do is, oh we need a way to take damage. But what we'll do is we'll just make the player flash. That'll probably be the easiest thing. So we're going to give the player the flash behavior, add a new behavior. Uh, flash there so if the bullet hits us then the player will flash could add a knockback if you wanted to I'm not gonna bother um, so now every time the bullet hits us we're gonna flash 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 me flash taking damage flash taking damage now we need to say that if we're invisible invincible then the, the bullet will not hurt us, we will not flash. So we're only gonna do this now, we're gonna add a condition, you can push C on the keyboard, and we're gonna add a condition, and we're gonna compare that variable we set up on the player. So go to the player, and we're gonna check that Boolean, and we're gonna say if invince, which is the invincible. So push I to turn it into a negative. So we're gonna say if we're not invincible, and the bullet hits the player, then we're gonna take damage. And then copy that whole line, paste it down, and then just change this to say if we are invincible, and then we can just delete that. Now we need a way to become invincible. So what we'll say is when we get hit, we'll become invincible for a couple of seconds so we don't get hit too often. So what we'll say is player set boolean invince to true, and then system wait two seconds and then set it back to false and that should be enough time to get hit twice I hope but let's see we might need to in fact, let's make it three seconds just to be sure so when we get hit we're gonna flash and um, we're gonna become invincible for three seconds and then we're gonna then we're gonna be able to be hit again so if we play it hit me I'll flash try and hit me again and I won't so I'm invincible and then I can be hit again. Okay, I hope that helps shed some light on how to do melee attacks, knockback, and player invincibility. If you want me to do a easy game mechanic tutorial of some kind, leave a comment below. If you found the tutorial useful, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. It really helps the channel, and I will see you in the next one.